Today we're gonna to be putting these two iPads up against each other and we're talking real world tests. We're gonna be exporting video. We're gonna be watching some video and I'm gonna to try to help you answer, is it worth upgrading your M1 iPad to the M4? We have the M1 iPad Pro, 256 gigabyte, 12.9 inch versus the M4 iPad Pro, 13 inch with one terabyte and the nano texture glass. So you'll kind of already notice just looking at it, you see more of a glare down here and everything because of my lights up here. So how do they compare to each other? Well, obviously everybody's talking about it. The thickness of the two devices are much different. So the new one is much thinner. It's kind of crazy. Like the pencil itself is a lot thicker than the iPad. Even, even before the pencil was technically thicker, but now it's even more so. So you can kind of look at these side by side and just see just how insane it is. The weight of them as well is pretty different. So this one is definitely a lot lighter. It's probably like a hundred grams. Will you notice that day to day? Probably not. Like I'll be honest, like, I don't really notice it. Holding it, I still notice a difference just because of how much thinner it is. But I think you'll probably get used to that pretty quickly and forget just how much thinner it is once you have it for more than just a couple weeks. I believe I mentioned it, but this one does have the nano texture screen. That is why you have a little bit more glare that you can see on this one than you do on this one. So this one is great. That nano texture screen, you can see the light as it hits the sides, but then it kind of dissipates as it goes in. Nano texture screen is pretty awesome, but it's also kind of weird. So Apple actually gives you with this one, you also, it's $100 more. You have to buy the one terabyte or two terabyte model to even have the option. And you get a cleaning cloth with it that supposedly, I know at least with the desktops, the only way to clean the screen that's recommended by Apple is with this cloth. So you're not supposed to clean it with anything else. You're only supposed to use it with the cloth they specify. Um, you can notice this cloth has the little Apple logo. I actually bought the one that they came out when they came out with the technology originally. So this was the original one. You can see it's a little dirty. I probably should clean it. I believe this one has an Apple logo somewhere as well. There it is, you can barely tell. But this one was $19 when it came out. Obviously this one's a little bigger. It's also a lot thinner. So you do have that, I'm not really sure. You are only supposed to clean these screens with the nano texture with these specially made cloths for them. So a little bit of a hassle because if you have fingerprints, technically you're not supposed to just use anything, you're supposed to use that screen. So something to keep in mind, but I am gonna be talking about, do you still get as black as blacks as you should have? Or is it is the micro LED from the 2020 iPad actually better than the tandem OLED if you get the nano texture screen? Now, I don't know if you can tell much of a difference right here, just looking at them side to side. So I'm just gonna launch a video on both of these. Let's go ahead and close this last one and scroll down. Let's see if we can find something that would be reasonable enough to watch. Let's look, let's go ahead and look at Daily Tech's actual iPad user video and see. So if you look side by side, you know, then I'll be honest, there's not much of a difference between the nano texture and the micro LED. It looks like the there is more of a color, like I can say there's more color, but I will say the blacks are a little more blacker because of that nano texture screen that does reduce the blacks. So you're not gonna get the exact same, but there is more color. The color is a little bit more vibrant on the M4, just from that tandem OLED. Also the intro of this video is amazing great job is that worth it like is that nano texture screen worth it and what i would highly recommend if you're in the market you can feel a little bit of difference but if you're hoping that that nano texture screen gives you more of a paper like feel it does not like that is not what this thing is let's go ahead and close both of these videos out it just doesn't give you that paper like feel 
So just keep that in mind. You're not going to be getting anything that feels like paper as you write. You can tell like feeling the sides versus feeling there's a little bit more of a grip, but it's nothing like a paper like screen protector or a matte screen protector. The one that I have that I honestly recommend is this one right here. And this is from a company called Astropad, not a sponsor. It's just one that they sent me and I've just been trying to just kind of get used to. And I've got to say, I love it because it comes off really easy. It has these micro suction. So I can even just place this right back on top of here. I probably won't get it perfectly, but I'll get it close enough. And now I have a matte screen. It also comes, if you look right here, the pencil has a different little tip to it. It comes with its own pencil tip. And now it feels like paper. Like I love, you can even just hear it. Let me get it close to my mic. That feels, I just, I love it. Now that obviously reduces the blacks on this one, but this is easily removable and you can add it back whenever you want. So keep that in mind. If you are looking at that nano texture screen, you have to get a one or two terabyte, which you're looking at like $1,800 to 2000, I believe for those models. This one with everything, I have the, the Apple Pencil and the Magic Keyboard. I think it was over 2,500. This one, now, if we were looking at comparing these side by side spec wise, I believe you're probably looking at like 13 or $1,400 for this one. This one, I think I bought for like half that. When I bought mine, I'm sure the price is dropping on these now that this one's out. So you can probably find this one used or refurbished for probably somewhere around five to six, seven hundred dollars tops with the 256 gig. So obviously, if you're wanting to go higher, you're probably going to have to pay a little bit more. I don't know if this one's worth it. And it's mainly like everybody's saying iPad OS. Is just not there. I also did a few real world tests with exporting video and I use my church video because it's just 1080p, but usually the sermons are pretty long. I took a couple one hour videos and just kind of compared to see the exact same project on both. Editing in Luma Fusion is the, the software I use most of the time if I'm gonna edit on the iPad. And the results were the M4 finished it in nine minutes and 14 seconds where the M1 took 11 minutes and 24 seconds. So you're talking a two minute and 10 seconds difference. So double the price at least, and you're talking two minutes on an export. Now, obviously that adds up after time, but is it like, I just still don't know for my use cases if, it, if that two minutes is really worth it each time. Obviously, if you're doing that multiple times a day, every single day, you know, you could eventually get up to save him like a half hour, maybe, maybe an hour tops. So in those cases, an hour a day, that's, that's a lot of time, probably worth it. But if you're only doing like one a week, probably not. The extra two minutes is not going to be worth double the price, but I thought it also would be fun. So I put the M4 also up against my M1 Max. MacBook Pro, and I wanted to first try LumaFusion on both, even though LumaFusion is an iPad first app only. The results were pretty surprising. The M4 actually beat the M1 Max MacBook with LumaFusion editing the same project. The M4 took nine minutes and 32 seconds roughly, and the M1 Max MacBook Pro took 10 minutes and 16 seconds. So a 44 second difference there between those two. I know LumaFusion isn't a Mac first app, so it's not really geared towards and not set up and coded towards handling everything that the Mac can do, but I still expected it to actually beat the M4. And in this case, it didn't. So then I threw both projects into Final Cut Pro and just tried. So Final Cut Pro on the iPad is obviously different than Final Cut Pro on the Mac, but I just still had to try it. So I put them up against each other and the M1 Max finished the project 
in about five minutes. So it knew what it was doing. Both of these were also set for the social platform setting. So I tried to get them as close as possible because Final Cut Pro is a little bit different between the two. And the M4 took 16 minutes. So we're talking the Mac beat it by 11 minutes. Now I'm not sure if these settings were the exact same because Final Cut Pro on the, the iPad is different. I tried to get them as close as possible, but Mac did have a couple extra settings. Maybe that would have done something a little bit different, but for the most part, they resulted in the exact same quality video and the Mac beat it by 11 minutes, which was just was crazy. Putting the M1 aside, the things that I will say that make the M4 kind of actually worth it is the pencil. So the pencil is pretty cool. It does have that tactic engine where you can squeeze it. On the nano texture, you do not get that matte finished feel. Doesn't feel like you're writing on paper, but you do have that cool little way to quickly switch between your, your writing utensils or whatever you wanna call them which is really nice. You can still double tap. So in case you didn't know that it is still there and you do feel a little haptic like bump when you do that, which is great because you did not get that on the old Apple Pencil. It's just a lot of fun. And if I go ahead and switch this to light mode, I'll try to show you. Let's go ahead and turn the brightness down as well. You do get a shadow of the pencil don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get a different angle, but as you're writing, you can see the shadow of the pencil itself. And if you change the pencil, let's say you change it to the highlighter, the shadow becomes the highlighter, which is just amazing. That little detail is something that I think is so Apple that, I mean, nobody puts that much detail into their devices. Now this feature, this function, of being able to squeeze is not available in every app. I believe I use GoodNotes a decent amount. And as of the last time I checked it, let's see, let's go ahead and just create one real quick. Um, oh, look at that, they actually added it. So now I do have the ability to change devices in GoodNotes as well. I do know for sure that in Procreate, as of right now, that does nothing. So that functionality doesn't do anything. You can still tap and switch back that way, but as far as the, the pinch or the squeeze, that doesn't do anything, and at least my version of Procreate at this time. So overall, the M4 iPad has been really nice. I love the thinness of this device. I love the weight. But like I said, those two things you kind of just get used to and they stop being like really worth the upgrade. The screen quality is a little bit better, but you're not gonna notice that day to day. And performance wise, it really just depends on what you do. But overall, like real world performance, the video editing is something that I do every day. And that would be the major reason why I would upgrade to this device. And those two minutes, of export time against the M1 just wasn't worth it for me. So you have to decide, but I'm just kind of sharing my experience, sharing what I have seen. And overall, it's an amazing device, but as everybody else has already said, and I'm sure you've heard it, it's so limited by iPad OS that the M1 is still limited by iPad OS. It could do so much more. The file system is one of the big hindrances. They've tried to make it as simple as possible, but that stops the complicated setups that a lot of people need to actually be pro. It's just, it's so close, but it's just not there. I hope you guys have liked this video. If you did, please feel free to hit that thumbs up. I hope you have a great rest of your day. God bless.